Are you battling SIBO? Small intestine bacterial overgrowth? It's a very common disorder that affects 6 to 15% of healthy people and up to 80% of those with irritable bowel syndrome. Here is everything you need to know about managing SIBO on a vegan diet. When you think about your physiology, you may think genes passed down from your parents, body tissue, bones, or hair color. But did you know that bacteria are an integral part of your body? The gut microbiome is home to trillions of bacteria, fungi, and viruses that are meant to be in your intestines. These trillions of microbes usually work in balance for key bodily functions. But what can happen when they fall out of balance? Small intestine bacterial overgrowth. About 70% of the immune system is found in the digestive tract. So when an imbalance of bacteria occurs, or in the case of SIBO, bacteria travel to where they shouldn't be, there is a domino effect of symptoms. The helpful bacteria that synthesize vitamins and eliminate food waste are meant to live in your colon. When they travel up the small intestine, a site that is meant for nutrient absorption, the bacteria disrupt the digestive process. When speaking to a doctor, it's important to find out why bacteria have overgrown in order to find the underlying cause for the bacterial migration in the first place. Though SIBO symptoms can vary, common ones are abdominal pain, discomfort, gas, and bloating. According to plant-based nutrition expert Simon Hammett, who goes by Goji Man on YouTube. It's good to see you all again. If we haven't met before then, hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. SIBO can impact the effectiveness of bile and prevent absorption of fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. For this reason, if left untreated for too long, SIBO can lead to serious nutrient deficiencies. And without regular bowel movements, your ileocecal valve will become weak. Now, your ileocecal valve is the muscle flap between your large and small intestines. And when this becomes weak and your gut motility is reduced, it will allow your gut bacteria in the large intestines to migrate into the small intestines, which is one of the main mechanisms for which small intestinal bacterial overgrowth will start. SIBO can be diagnosed by a healthcare practitioner through a breath test that measures the level of methane or hydrogen. Who can be affected by SIBO? The answer is anyone. SIBO bacteria feed off of fiber, and a multidisciplinary health center in Vancouver has named stress, food poisoning, antibiotic use, and pre-existing immune conditions as potential causes. Hammett believes low stomach acid to be another possible cause. Stomach acid is the first line of defense against pathogens in our food killing off the bad guys before digestion. But when our stomach acid is low, which can be caused by a diet high in processed foods, it allows harmful bacteria to bypass into your system. Diet may help manage the condition. A common diet for SIBO sufferers is a low FODMAP diet. The diet was designed by a team of researchers at the Monash University. However, researchers at Monash University have been studying the dietary factors in food that can trigger IBS symptoms. FODMAP stands for an acronym that is fermentable oligo dye monosaccharides and polyols. So these are actually five different sugar categories that are found naturally in foods. It details specific foods which may offset SIBO or IBS and encourages people to avoid such items. According to registered dietitian, Dr. Pamela Ferguson, most people only need to follow a low FODMAP diet for a few weeks before reintroducing other foods. Foods to eat on a vegan low FODMAP diet include tofu, tempeh, and small quantities of lentils as a protein source. Grain options include buckwheat, millet, and quinoa. Many fruits and veggies are allowed, strawberries, cantaloupe, grapes, potato, pumpkin, peppers, baby spinach, and eggplant, to name a few. Nuts and seeds are also beneficial. Brazil nuts, pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, and pecans. The Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine also has resources on managing digestive issues with diet. Its recommendations include avoiding gluten and dairy and introducing probiotics and peppermint oil. 
talk to your healthcare provider for what will work best for you. Would you be interested in a video on Candida too? Let us know in the comments. That's it for today. Remember to subscribe and hit the red bell. New videos every Tuesday and Friday.